so, um, okay, so this is what we see when all this data, purchase data, every other kind of data is captured and made available in real time and combined with automation. We get this kind of bizarre world here uh, from the Femme Minority Report with Tom Cruise. Whoop. Less security is issue number four out of five. And we all know that all these things, this is what's going on. Here's the dark web where you can find people to do these nasty things. You can find people to do uh, robo-calling too. Um, so it's going to be back and forth uh, between, with the bad guys, always a step ahead. Okay, because... There, how can, it's harder to protect a, some whole huge thing than it is to find one little chink and get in, right? So issue five, which is our last big issue, is this communication tsunami that we're seeing more and more of, particularly with emails, but with everything. This is from email marketing in 2020 from litmus.com. Email readers are going to get better and better. They're going to read the emails. And um, they're going to rank in terms of importance, uh, probably. Um, so this is a prediction here. Hyper-personalization and marketing will reach a significant level. More and more one-to-one. -one. Rules-based triggers assimilation of the mobile channel and connecting data from other channels and platforms all going into communication that will be close to one-to-one. -to -one. Okay. Email will leverage every interaction from the Internet of Things. That's your uh, Alexa and your light bulbs to turn on when you tell them to. And as Paul Davis said, this is putting in the pulling in the psychographic data for you as well. Okay. So it's a tsunami, but it's going to become smarter. Okay. Okay. Open tracking, device tracking, right, folks? Location tracking, click-through behavior, and other data may all be subject to subscriber subscriber opt-ins and opt-outs. That's the privacy issue. Oh, and then um, one more thought. So to break the clutter of... Uh, all this wave of communication, will there be more direct mail? And we've already kind of heard that that's a, that is a trend because email boxes are so cluttered. And contact from a real human being. Sometimes it's only a phone call, but that's a real human being most of the time, we hope. So now um, a couple of Final thoughts in terms of, and I've already, as I say, woven it into this discussion to some degree. But um, here's my take with some help from one thing or another uh, on some trends we may see because of what we're going through with this COVID thing. We will find a vaccine within 12 to 18 months and much of the world's population will be vaccinated. What about the anti-vaxxer? movement, by the way? Will they allow themselves to be vaccinated? Will they be forced to be vaccinated, I wonder? Uh, and who pays for all these vaccinations? Um, I'm particularly thinking of countries, poorer countries, such as in Africa, or, uh, you know, the less developed countries in the world that don't have big GNPs and lots of money lying around. Who's going to pay for their vaccination? Um, this is something I'm hoping that we'll learn important lessons from this and be better prepared for the next time this happens. 
countries and companies will get better at working together to solve health problems. Look at Google and uh, Apple working together on a mobile phone uh, program to help um, track who's exposed to someone who has the virus. So you've got Android and uh, iPhones working together. Who would have thought? Will there be universal health coverage in this country, hopefully to begin with, and then in other parts of the world? Because we see the results. It hurts everyone. If people get sick and can't get coverage, then more and more other people get sick. So it's in one's own self-interest to make sure the whole population has some health coverage. And there'll be health screening all over the place. You're going to get your forehead red most places you go. So if you think about 9-11 and uh, says someone working in New York City having to go to meetings and office buildings all over the city all day, um, after 9-11, all of a sudden there was a serious uh, security um, scene on the ground floor of companies and buildings, I should say, where you had to show ID, get written down, have your picture taken in many cases, sometimes put your items through a scanner before you could get into the building. So will taking a temperature be part of that? Or looking at some kind of certification that you've been tested and don't have anything? I think it will, and uh, it'll be um, at uh, airports, customs, at FIT, okay? And will we have, uh, because of this temperature taking need, some new technologies developed where you could take to everyone's temperature in a whole room by clicking a button, um, you know, or a whole train station, etc. Things like that be invented. Economic, there will definitely be less travel for business. It's going to have an impact on airlines and hotels uh, and uh, business real estate, office buildings. People won't as much see the need to have these big offices they go to every day. People leaving cities. Well, the cities are problems with things like this. You want to be in less densely populated areas. So will people start to leave as opposed to gravitating towards cities? Smaller businesses especially will not be able to come out of this. Um, now, whether the people who are in the business will be able to start a new one, I mean, hopefully, in many cases, they will. And what we talked about already before about working class essential, quote unquote, jobs will have more status and pay better. There may be a new labor movement. Uh, and many businesses will recover and employment will return to high levels. Now, remember, the economy did not die of its own accord as with the Depression in the 30s. Um, this economy was put on in suspended animation around, you could say, life support. It's like someone with a brain injury until you can fix the brain injury, you put them on life support. I mean, so presumably when the problem is fixed, will come out of it and whatever underlying strengths were there in our economy will come to the fore again. I think that's likely. Uh, I read an article today that the largest companies are the ones that will do even better than they did before because they have the huge cash reserves and ability to borrow and um, particularly like an Amazon and they're all digital, Facebook, Google, Amazon. I mean, these companies will thrive as never before. Now, I don't like getting into politics. I'm not supposed to get into politics. So I'm not going to say, I guess, if I'm for something or against it. But um, the current administration does not seem very interested. They do seem interested in infrastructure investment. That I will say, although nothing has happened. It's just been talked. But definitely green initiatives are not important to the current administration. So um, if a new administration takes over after the November election, I think it's a fair bet that particularly given the fact that the, the, the reins have been loosened, so to speak, on government spending in a major way here with, bill, with trillions of dollars being committed and, and more to come for the COVID response. The purse strings are loosened, and so the next step will be 
let's rebuild our infrastructure. And we have to. Okay, our old roads and highways, the fact that we don't have, uh, you know, high-speed internet everywhere in the country, um, building out 5G networks, uh, uh, railroads, subways, tunnels, um, you know, new schools, new buildings, uh, these horrible, you know, it's public housing where people live. It's ridiculous. Uh, it's unsafe, it's dirty, it's leaky. I mean, these things need to be addressed. <laughs> okay, don't get me started. And uh, if it's a Democrat administration, you'll see maybe something like a Green New Deal. I'm also going to say uh, that the current administration does not seem to be very interested in addressing racial inequalities. In fact, I think it's it's I think it's not unfair to say that Republicans in general are seem to be most interested in repressing votes from minority groups because they don't have the support of the minority groups and they're trying desperately to keep power and stay in office and they're doing a damn good job of it. <laughs> they're fighting a rear guard action, you know, as you know, maintaining some power as honestly the I think the your generation and of liberalization and more tolerance is coming up and there are more and more, you know, non-white people gaining in terms of their percent of population in the U S they're fighting a losing battle, you know, I think, but they're fighting it very well, <laughs> very effectively. But, uh, if a democratic administration gets into power in November, um, you will see real moves, not just talk, about addressing racial inequalities. I do believe that. Uh, and this will be more and more the case in the future. This will be one, this will be the next big issue, I think, to be tackled in this country because it's been going on long enough. Um, w on a smaller note, uh, will there be a government funded domestic Peace Corps with jobs for new college graduates? And will that Peace Corps, almost like uh, Franklin Roosevelt's, uh, you know, workers, uh, the WPP, workers project group that went out and built, you know, trails and national parks and buildings. He provided direct governmental employee for lots of unemployed people and he put them to work fixing the infrastructure around the country. Um, so will, will, will there be opportunities to go teach? in schools all over the country, et cetera, funded by the government. Because uh, particularly if the job markets don't pick up for younger people and new college graduates, you know, what a win-win to put young, energetic, brilliant folks like you to work, pay you, get you great experiences and have you do something positive for the country to address some of these problems. The national debt's gonna be <laughs> just <laughs> phenomenal. But I don't think it's going to kill us. It isn't because it's going to lead to a better country and a more efficient, fair, and better country, which we have to have. I think there will be a huge transfer of wealth from this 1%, from the Bob Igers at Disney and uh, uh, Jeff Bezos and uh, a lot of these folks. Um, they're going to uh, they're going to be more taxes. And it's not just going to be uh, the federal government borrowing that's going to pay for all this. Some of these individuals, um, and they're are 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 going to have to pay, and there will be a redistribution of wealth. And it's happened in the past, and it hasn't really hurt anybody. So now. It is also entirely possible that uh, that the there will not be a democratic Democrat winning the White House in November, and that we'll have President Trump for another term, and then who knows what, because you just can't predict these things. You don't know. We don't know what could even happen in the world between now and November. Um, but, as I've said a few times in this lecture, um, the change is coming. Um, my generation hasn't done the greatest job of pushing it. 
that's for sure. Not as well as I thought we would when I was young and in my in, in the 1960s. But you guys are coming on. <laughs>